So first, I just want to remind us all and give a quick rundown on Empower Africa and our services, okay? The first is the Empower Africa Business Network, which I will dive into in just a few moments. The second is trade missions and international events. This is something that is crucial and we really believe in, okay? The concept of trade missions is like the trade mission that we have here, which is our first agriculture trade mission in Sierra Leone, is to bring in international companies, expertise and know-how, investors, anyone who is looking for business opportunities, into Sierra Leone, putting their foot, feet on the ground, looking, seeing everything with their own eyes, and seeing all the different uh, untapped potential that this country has. Now, everything that I'm mentioning, um, we're starting with Sierra Leone. Empower Africa has chosen Sierra Leone to be the first country that we're launching our services and all our activities because we believe in Sierra Leone, we have a close relationship with Sierra Leone, and um, the goal, of course, is after that to expand to the rest of Africa. There are a number of different African countries who have heard about us and have contacted us and would like us to start working with them and collaborating with them as well. We're more than happy to do that, but we have a special place in our heart for Sierra Leone, and uh, we're very proud to collaborate and start with Sierra Leone first. The concept of international events. At the end of the day, you're doing business with people. There's no way around it. You have to meet the people, you have to build and establish a relationship, and that's how you gain trust while you see the different value that each party and entity can bring and working together. That's why the international events are a very important focus that we, that we have in our company. The last thing is project facilitation. This is something very, very, very important because as you all may know, many times, sometimes people need help connecting the dots. Whether it's contacting that person, whether it's getting that specific information, and how to ease and assist with collaboration. We decide to project uh, facilitation on very specific projects where we see true value, where we believe in the project, where we believe in the values of the companies that are working with us, their integrity, and so on. And in addition to doing business and being successful in business, we want to help some of the poorest countries in the world, some of the poorest people in the world, to improve their lives and to move forward together. Driving business in Africa. So everyone here, I'm assuming, if not everyone, then almost everyone, has been to Africa at least once, right? Let alone if you live in Africa and in Sierra Leone. And we know that um, many times there are different challenges. And just like any environment that has its own challenges, Africa is quite unique in a number of aspects. And I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about a farmer his name is Muhammad Sawane. He lives in the Kono district. He grows mangoes. He grows cassava. He grows cocoa, cashews. And one of his biggest challenges is distribution. As many of you may know, in New York, in London, in Paris, most of the waste is post-distribution. What does that mean? It means that in Tesco, or Walmart, or Trader Joe's, or my refrigerator at home, there's a lot of produce, a lot of good produce, that's being thrown away. There are channels of distribution, but there's a lot of waste. In a lot of developing countries, the problem is the other way around. There is produce, but there's no distribution. And the channel distribution are not synced together. And so there you have a lot of waste pre-distribution before it's even been distributed. So it's just sitting there, not being harvested, and sitting in the fields, which in my humble opinion is a catastrophe when you just think about the fact that you have people who are hungry and people who are not getting a proper diet and nutrition, right? And you're saying the produce exists, we just have to bring it to them. So what is the business network? A centralized platform bringing everyone who wants to drive business in Africa to one table. Think, if you may, of LinkedIn meets Bloomberg on Africa. What do I mean? LinkedIn, in terms of the 
visualized profiles that each company has where you could see details and learn about the company, contact information, their track record, right? Bloomberg, in the sense of in-depth information, all the feasibility studies of all the different sectors in one place, analysis and information, business intelligence, that will help every company learn, do better research, and make smarter business decisions. So who is the network for, okay? Let's go over all the different stakeholders, all the different entities that I'm talking about that we wanna to bring to one table, okay? SMBs, small medium businesses. Remember Muhammad Sawane? He is a local farmer in Sierra Leone, and I promise you this exists all over Sierra Leone, not just in Kono District, and all over African developing countries in the world. He doesn't have a profile. He doesn't have a, a visualized profile where somebody can come and see what he's doing. And I'll explain why the disconnect is so, is, is, is so difficult here. Because if we know that his main problem is distribution, for all we know, there's someone an hour drive, two hour drives away, that has four trucks. He's also looking for collaboration. He's also looking to expand his business. They just don't know about it. They don't know about each other. So the core concept is to bring everyone to one table, connecting people, connecting businesses, and enhancing collaboration. Multinational enterprises. We're talking about Dole, Delphi, Microsoft, UPL, Nestle, Oracle, GE. Think about all the international enterprises, these huge companies that are looking to expand their businesses. And they're looking for different countries. And they know that Sierra Leone has a ton of untapped potential. But hold that, let's go back a step. Not all of them know about the untapped potential. And that's another major mission that we have here, to enhance awareness and to enhance positive awareness and information on Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone has known some terrible years, they're very difficult years. And now, we believe and we trust in the new government and their new direction, and we believe that things are moving forward for Sierra Leone, and things are moving up, and it's a matter of bringing everyone to the table and letting them know. Governments, another thing that we see is in our many meetings with the Sierra Leone government, and this is true for other governments as well, sometimes we see there's a void in the communication and ease of information of who's out there. So for instance, the directory of profiles that I'm gonna to get to in a few minutes, imagine if a government official, doesn't matter if it's the Minister of uh, uh, Agriculture, Minister of Energy, you name it. Imagine if he had a menu, if you will, of the leading companies in the world who expertise in that specific thing. He literally will go into the network and scroll around, seeing all the different options. He's looking for a company who knows how to build a bridge. Okay, let's see who are the leading companies in the world who know how to build a bridge. Who are the leading companies in the world who know how to plant 10,000 hectares of rice? Who are the companies in the world, the best companies in the world, who know how to build a power plant for Freetown? Four, financial institutions. These are a key factor as well, because you've got banks, private equity funds, VCs, and private investors who are looking to get a piece of the action. Imagine if they had a deal flow engine that tells and explains all the different projects that are going on. Again, connecting people to enhance collaboration and working together. The last two, government agencies and nonprofits. This is something huge that we've been seeing and noticing. Again, a void, a huge void and disconnect between all these organizations. There are a lot of government agencies, to name a few, DFID, USAID, um, TBI, um, and many other organizations, MCC, that are doing tremendous work, investing copious amounts of resources. We're talking billions of dollars in the past decade in Sierra Leone and all of Africa. And not everybody knows about all the feasibility studies. Not everyone is aware of all the effort that some of these organizations have done. 
So what we're doing is putting it all together in one place, bringing everyone to one table. So what does the network provide? A business directory of in-depth profiles for entities driving business in Africa. Again, you can visualize it, you can see it, right? A dynamic data center for business intelligence and interactive deal flow engine. I wanna dive into the features of the network, but one of the major aspects that we see is when you talk about the discommunication and disinformation, it's a simple aspect of bringing people to the same table to have a cup of coffee. And we see it. We see it in the past year alone, working in Sierra Leone, and we know this is true all over the world. It's just that things in Africa and things in Sierra Leone are quite different for numerous reasons from Paris or New York or London. And so what we want to do is think about all the different tools that can help and enhance driving business together in Africa. The features of the network. Build and own your personal and organization's profile. Okay? Present your products and services to the global network. Each company, right, will have the opportunity to show what they have and to present it in front of the global network. Search by key business criteria, skills, industries, location, and more. Why is this so important? Because when we're looking ahead, okay, like I said, we're starting with Sierra Leone and we're starting with agriculture. But what you're gonna have in the Empower Africa Business Network is the ability to search each sector and each country and look for all this information that's important for you. Access to the live feed, right, receiving Updates from businesses throughout the network. Create, find, and invite, and attend local and international business events. Like I mentioned before, at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. It's all about meeting the people, understanding what does your company do? Hello, sir, what does your company do? Oh, that's interesting. My company does this. You know what? I can see a way that we can collaborate. You know what, though? We are missing some capital. Let's look at the financial institutions. All in one place. Chat and contact uh, prospective business partners. Now I also think another word just about the um, invites in terms of the um, uh, different events. We're not only talking about our events and Power Africa events that are gonna be, we're gonna do more and more events in Sierra Leone and then the rest of Africa. In London, in New York, you name it. But we're also giving the possibility for companies, the actual companies, to do their own event. So imagine if DSTI would want to do an event where you want to really enhance the connections of what you're looking for. You're looking for um, genetic capabilities of DNA. You can do an event and invite all the relevant companies that interest you, that you think can add value for you, that would want to work with you. If I take Dole, Delphi, UPL, anyone, we all need collaboration, we all need um, uh, different tools to succeed. Now, obviously, some of these companies are larger than others. No doubt, Nestle has a little bit more resources than Mohamed Sawane that I mentioned, right? The beauty is putting these people together. Because if I'm an entrepreneur in solar energy, and let's say I have no business in Africa yet, but I really want to penetrate the African market. I can go into each country and look what's going on. Let's say I am already actually operative in Rwanda and Ghana, and I have solar fields there, but I'm really interested in Sierra Leone. I can go into Sierra Leone, according to the country, solar energy by sector, and see who is on the ground. Who are the local businesses? What are the feasibility studies that exist? And so on. Access expert consultants in your sector. Agriculture, energy, technology, education, you name it. Again, one of the biggest problems is that I want to do something. I'm a farmer in Sierra Leone. I actually have a lot of capital, but I need to, I want to get better know-how on how to grow cassava. Maoz showed before, for those of you who were in his presentation, how you can increase the yield of cassava by more than 40% with simple know-how. Now, Mind you, when I say simple, I'm talking about decades of research that have been done all over the world, in Israel and other countries, of you know, um, a lot of research organizations. 
But once you have that already, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are schools, like Growing Smart, for instance, in Ghana, which we hope to open in Sierra Leone as well, that teach within a period of six to nine weeks how to be more efficient in agriculture, how to grow your yield, and so on. Get updates on government regulations and news per country and sector. Again, that ability to search by country and search by the sector that you're interested in. You can get notifications on things that interest you. I mean, with all due respect, if I'm in agriculture and I'm growing um, you know, cassava and mango and cocoa, I'm not necessarily interested in energy. Maybe I am. If so, you can get those updates as well. But you have the ability to customize what you're interested in. What's your core business? What are you interested in? And get those notifications. Find or post projects, tenders, investment opportunities that are actively seeking suppliers or capital. I think this is one of the biggest needs that exist, by the way, all over the world. If you had gone out to Tel Aviv, um, New York, London, San Francisco, and you would have a platform that connects people and says, hey, you know what, you're a VC, that means you're looking for opportunities to invest. Here are all the startups, all entrepreneurs, wait, what are you interested in? Mobility, energy, genetics, healthcare, no problem, shoes, here are your options. The ease of information is key here. So if we talk about the next steps of the network and what we plan to do, just like we're doing agriculture now with the next sectors and the next countries, just to walk you through it so you understand how we plan. Mapping the business environment. We have an incredible research team led by Masha here from our team, raise your hand Masha. Fantastic, brilliant analysts going over all the information that's out there, making it easy for other companies to just come and see everything in one place. The relevant researchers, feasibility studies, and information in one place. Sourcing knowledge and feasibility studies, like I mentioned. Facilitating projects. Again, we see already in Sierra Leone a number of different projects. People, some, some of the times people came to us and literally just approached us and said, listen, we need help with this, we need help with that. Other times we hear of a different company, specifically at Energy, for instance, who's looking for a project in Sierra Leone. And it's that simple connection that one makes in his mind, saying, oh, you know what? You should speak to so-and-so. Because he actually heads the projects in Sierra Leone. You know what? You should actually speak to John Smith who has a fund in energy and is looking for investments in Africa. That simple, yet so pivotal and important connection is key. The next trade mission, like I mentioned, the trade mission that we have right here, agriculture. We're focusing on agriculture right now. We brought in nine international companies with incredible know-how, very versatile, aquaculture, agriculture, and so on. And they're coming in, you know, meeting the people in Sierra Leone, seeing it with their own eyes, and we think that that's also one of the key factors of creating more business. So there's gonna be a trade mission in energy, there's gonna be a trade mission in education, there's gonna be a trade mission in healthcare, and so on. And then of course, the next sectors and next countries, because as you can imagine, this is a pretty big uh, vision that we have here. To sum it up, we believe we believe in sustainable economic development, okay? Trade over aid. We already see leaders of African countries and other developing countries around the world saying, we don't want your aid, we want your investment. Now, granted, aid is a very important factor, and we're not talking about it not existing, but we see presidents and government officials all over the world, <clears throat> excuse me, saying, we want investment. We need investment, we need to enhance our economic development. Africa's true value is within its people. <clears throat> and we really do believe that. We believe that there's so many minerals in the ground, perhaps, some places more than others. But what about the people? What about the capabilities that each and every individual have here? I was speaking just now in the, in the coffee break with, um, with a representative from uh, Delphi. And he mentioned that he was speaking with kids. And he asked, who here has a smartphone? 
More than half of the classroom raised their hands. He says, that's great. How many of you know how to use a smartphone? Not so many raised their hands. They say, well, we know how to text, we know how to call. Can we comprehend what power each and every one of us has from a smartphone these days? The access to endless information, it's about education. It's about, it's about empowering those who haven't, don't have the privilege of getting real modern education, the sense of being, having the access to all this information around the world. And investing in human capital. If we take as an example countries like Singapore, Israel, Rwanda, and there are other examples as well, they're not all necessarily rich in natural resources. Some of these countries that I mentioned have near to none. What's interesting about these three countries and others is that they have understood the importance of education and have invested in human capital. Because once you invest in human capital, the sky's the limit. The last concept, which is what I've been emphasizing and talking about um, throughout my whole presentation, win, win, win. It's not just a win-win situation between me and you. We're talking about collaboration. We're talking about incorporating to expand. There's so much opportunity. There's so much opportunity out there. It's not about competition. There's so many companies that can work together with different know-how. There's, it, it, there's endless opportunity. We're looking for collaborations. We're looking for people who have know-how, have expertise. What value do you bring to the table? What are you interested in? Great, I can bring this to the table. She can bring this to the table. And together, one plus one can equal a million. And even more, of course. Thank you very much. That's the end of the presentation. If you'd like more information about the Power Africa Business Network, you can feel free to scan the QR code and um, stay in touch with us for more information soon to come. Thank you very much.